Okay, in the last video we learned about the stage schematic and we use the stage schematic to create this hierarchy where uh, the body is basically the root of the animation and then we've got an arm connected to the body and a hand connected to the arm. Of course we have two arms as is usual and then of course we have the mouth as well if you want to make a more elaborate model. You can also do a neck and the and the head and stuff like that and upper leg and lower leg and foot and then you can make a really elaborate rigged model so using the stage schematic we created this hierarchy and the good thing about that is that now it's really easy to use the skeleton tool now that we have this hierarchy it's really just a question of clicking on this bone to have a look at the skeleton tool the skeleton tool has got three modes build skeleton basically we don't need to worry about that anymore because we've already used uh, the stage schematic to take care of the skeleton building part we also have animate which we can use to move different bones in the body and we also have inverse kinematics but first let's have a look at the animate so as i see i've got animate and I, if i collect select the core bone which is the body i can rotate the whole thing and all the other bones follow if i want to rotate the arm i can rotate the whole thing the body doesn't follow but the hand follows and if i want to rotate the hand it doesn't have any bones attached to it, so nothing follows. But I'm sure you have noticed that when I rotated the hand, the arm, something weird happened. In other words, this is not like how a human being actually rotates his arm. The problem is that we've got the center of rotation in the middle of the arm. That doesn't make any sense. So let me quickly control Z this. So in order to change that, I'm going to go back to this uh, animate tool and I'm going to change the center. Remember up here we've got all these options. One of the options is center and I'm going to change the center of rotation for both the arms. There we go. And now when I go back to my bone tool, you can see the center of rotation has moved. Ta -da! Which brings us to the final thing which uh, we can do with the bone tool, which is pretty useful. It's called inverse kinematics. So you will have noticed that in animate, we move the root bone first, and then we move, or shall we call it the parent bone, and then we move the ch child bones, etc., etc. With inverse kinematics, instead of starting at the root and moving forward, we start at the child bone and we set the location of the child bone and then it will calculate all the parent bones. Unfortunately I only have two bones here so it's a bit hard to demonstrate so I set up another project to make it easier to demonstrate. Let's go to file open recent demo And as you can see here, I have set up using the stage schematic a number of bones. And when I go to inverse kinematics, I can determine the position of this final bone and it's going to calculate all the parent bones. If I wanted to do it with animate, I would first have to set the position of the parent bone and then the position of this bone and then the position of this bone this is called forward kinematics inverse kinematics is just the opposite so inverse kinematics is a pretty useful tool especially when you have long chains of bones okay let's go back to our original character and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import the audio and we're going to have we're going to use our rig to have our character wave his arms as he talks.
So I'm going to set a key here and set a key here as well as here and as well as here. And then moving forward, let's see. Okay, in the next video we're going to talk about animating the tentacle monster. Animating the tentacle monster is all about the plastic tool. So, see you in the next lesson. Have a good one. Bye-bye.